Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, I'm doing a little experiment testing out Luminar Neo's AI focus stacking versus Photoshop. Let's jump in and see how they compare and what the differences are. Hi everyone, so to get started with our experiment of comparing AI-based focus stacking to my go-to old school Photoshop auto blend, we're going to take these eight tulip images and blend them using Luminar Neo's focus stacking extension, and then I'll compare it with Photoshop. So to get started, let's talk just a little bit about focus stacking. So focus stacking is something I don't do all the time, but occasionally you want an image to be sharp. If it's a flower, you may want it to be sharp from one tip all the way around. Or if it's a landscape scene, you may want the foreground, the middle, and the background to be sharp. So it is critical in order to do that, you would need to focus stack your image. And that's just where you're going to move your focus point as you shoot. It is highly encouraged to shoot using a tripod so that you have stability in the image and it will align when you combine it in a program. Now, over the years, I have tried a variety of programs that are meant to blend your image together. I've tried Helicon software and it's not one of my favorites. I think it's a little bit um, clunky and I don't, I don't think I get as great of results as I get with Photoshop. And that's just my preference. There are people that love that program. I was recently introduced though to Luminar Neo's focus stacking and I wanted to give it a shot and see how it does. It is AI based. So Luminar Neo, if you're not familiar with it, Luminar Neo is a software editing program. It's a catalog as well as a editing program that's AI based. You can purchase the entire program and have it for life. Right now it's on special for 150. The link to get all the info on Luminar Neo is in my video description. I also have a coupon code for you if you're interested in the program. Now their focus stack is an extension. So they have a lot of different extensions and focus stacking is one of them. Again, it's AI powered. It's going to do it with one click and it's meant to blend your image together. So taking multiple, whether it's a macro shot or a landscape shot. So I've been playing around with it, but I'm really excited today to test it against my old school Photoshop auto blend. So let's see how it manages the process. So what's great about Luminar Neo is you can use the program as a standalone, but you can also use it as a plug in with Lightroom. And that's how I use the program. So I'm going to take image 96. Let's go to my image stack. And I decided I didn't need all of these. So I'm going to start with, I think this is image six. Yes, because it's got this sharp edge right here. And this is what I want. It's really important to me in this image. I wanted this edge. I want this edge and the top. And so within this stack of images, I think I've got all of those areas. And so what I've done is I've highlighted these. Now I'm going to right click. You have to go to export and you export to focus stacking in Luminar Neo. Now, again, once you purchase Luminar Neo, you will get a plug in that works with Lightroom or Photoshop. All right, so we're going to click that. It's going to upload the nine photos to Luminar Neo. Now it keeps all of your originals right here in your Lightroom catalog. It's just going to pull the files in, combine them, and then it will save a TIFF copy that's been focused at back to your Lightroom catalog. So it's really nice that it does all of that for you. Let's make this screen larger. So you first get this menu where it gives you all of the images. You have a chance to take one off if you don't want it. There's also this advanced wheel. And what it does is it you mark auto alignment because you want it to align your images. And from there, it selects usually the middle image as a reference point. And I leave it as the middle image. You can also select chromatic aberration reduction. That's where any purple or green fringe. And I go ahead and select that just in case. And then at that point, you can click stack. Now it's going to process and I find it takes anywhere from 
30 seconds to a minute or maybe a little longer. Now you can process up to 100 images with this program. I haven't done that yet. I've tried to just keep it simple so that I could really test the capability of the program. And so it's going to process, takes just a few minutes. This gives you a chance to stretch your legs, go get a cup of coffee, and then come back and we'll see the finished product. So now that the Magic AI has processed our Focus Stacked image, it brings it into Luminar Neo, where you can then make additional edits to the image if you like, or you can click Apply and it will take the image back to Lightroom. But let's first take a close up look of the image. So as we can see, we have this nice sharp edge. We have our sharpness up to this middle petal. We have sharpness over here on the left. And we have some sharpness here in the back. Now this back edge is not as sharp as I'd like and there is some ghosting. So we can see where when it blended another image, it didn't quite get that completely aligned. Now that's something easy that we can fix in post-processing. As I've been testing Luminar's extension for focus stacking, I have ran into this a couple times. So what I would highly recommend is if you are focus stacking an image that you make sure your tripod is really steady, that you use a um, shutter release or a timer so that there's no camera shake. I did not do that with this image. So I had it on a tripod, but as I shot, I just pressed the shutter. I was outdoors, there was wind, there was people running around. So naturally there's going to be some movement. And while the AI software I think did a great job of blending the most important parts, I have found with this program that sometimes AI is still doing some ghosting. Now let's go and try this in Photoshop and see how it compares just so we have an idea. Um, because I do like the one-stop process and I like that um, it was one stop, it's pretty quick, and you can do up to 100 images with that one click process. So let's go back to Lightroom really quick. I've still got these images selected. And to edit these in Photoshop, what I'm going to do is right click, edit in, and open as layers in Photoshop. That's going to open all the layers. So I've already got that set up for us because I wanted to um, make sure to save some of your time today. And so here's all the layers. They have been loaded into Photoshop. The next step that we want to do is we first want to align the layers. So in Photoshop, you do have to do a couple separate steps to get it focus stacked. First thing we're going to do is go to edit and we want to select auto align. So auto align is right here. And you do want to have all your layers selected. So we need to hold the shift key and gray out all of your layers and then come over to edit auto align what this is going to do it's going to magically look you want to select auto and it's going to go ahead and um, align up all your images now you can do vignette removal i don't typically check that but you could try it if you think you're going to get some vignetting around your image all right so i've already processed that for us today and so as you can see with this image, there was some areas where the images did not completely line up. So again, I did have some movement even though I was on a tripod. Now this transparent edges, this will go away once we do the next step, which is blending the images together. <coughs> Excuse me. So now that we have this image auto auto aligned, we now want to go to edit and we're going to do auto blend. And when you select auto blend, you want to be sure to select stack images. I also select seamless tones and content aware. Those help make sure that it's very seamless and it will fill in these transparent edges. So I'm going to click cancel and I'm going to have process this for us so that we can see what it does. So the magic of Photoshop is it creates mask for you. So it goes to each layer and it masks and brings out the details and it does it with its, its powerful system. And so you've got each layer and you've got all the mask created for you and that's how Photoshop blends together the image. So let's now take a look at the Photoshop image. 
So very similar to the AI, we've got a nice, nice focus here, nice focus in the center, this edge, and this top of the image is still a little soft and there's a tiny bit of ghosting, just a little bit. So let's go ahead and let's minimize these screens and I am going to bring these over and we're going to compare the two images. So let's get rid of that. Bring this over and we'll bring the Luminar image over and let's just take a look and see, um, see what we think. I'm going to enlarge and enlarge. So if we look at this first petal, um, I think really comparable here. Um, let me move it around. Yeah, I think a nice job. This line looks really sharp. Now, Photoshop gets a little soft right here on the edge, and you can see the AI is really, really detailed and in focus. Let's go over to this petal. And again, this is a little bit brighter. So I think the AI really pulled out the detail. And then we've got this nice sharp edge. So right now I would give bonus points to the um, AI program. I think it's done a really great job of capturing this edge. Now the center of the image looks pretty consistent. This might be a little bit sharper, but overall this top edge looks really good. There is some ghosting right here in the AI, if you look at that, and there's not any in the Photoshop. Now, the top of the image is where the concern is. And so if we look at this edge of the petal, very comparable on both. And then if we look at this top, this back portion, um, a little bit, it's soft in both images. I think what's interesting is the AI really tried to combine it and it created some ghosting. Photoshop has kept it, um, obviously did not mask this very much. There's some ghosting, but it just kept it relatively soft. So this would be an example, regardless of which program I've used, if I really wanted this to be super sharp front to back, I would need to go back to Lightroom and see if I had an image that had this back area in focus. And then what I could do is combine that with this already blended image. So I could go back and bring out this detail if I wanted. Now, if you're trying to decide which focus stacking program to use, I think Luminar Neos is a great option. Again, it is AI based. And as you can see, it did a really nice job of getting all the areas really, really sharp. This back area, just a little bit of ghosting. And as I've been practicing with their program, it does have a tendency to do some ghosting. Right now, there's not an option to minimize that. I think as they continue to evolve the program, it will get less and less. And this is something you can easily fix in post-processing. So I think it's definitely worth the money. It's also relatively fast if you have 100 or 50 images, it's going to do it so fast and then you don't have all the layers that you have to deal with with Photoshop. So if you're looking for a program that offers you some amazing editing tools as well as the Focus Stacking extension, Luminar Neo might be a great option for you. So a couple tips if you're going to consider an AI-based Focus Stacking program. Number one would be, I highly encourage you to shoot on a tripod, use a shutter release button or an app on your phone so that there's zero camera shake. You really want your image to be sharp. And in order to do that, you need to reduce any opportunity for camera shake. I also um, encourage you to really take as many shots as you feel you need and really focus on every particular area of the image to prevent some of this ghosting or softness. But I think the stability of your shooting is really important. I also found that you want to go in a pattern and make sure your layers follow that pattern. So you don't want to jump around. You don't want to take a shot in this area, jump over to the middle, jump over here. You want your stack to follow around the image. You can start in the center, but I would then follow around. I find that when my stack of images follows a sequence, it definitely loads better and processes better. 
Um, that just may be something I, I'm thinking, but that's how I have noticed a difference when I'm using this AI program. So I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. There is nothing wrong with blending an image in Photoshop. It's a great standby go-to. Old Faithful, I will still use it, but I'm really impressed with this new option here in Luminar Neo. So I have a link in the description to give you more details if you're new to Luminar, also a coupon code, and I'll be having some more videos about this program because there are some amazing editing features that I really like to use, especially with my floral images. So thanks so much for watching today. 